Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to take the time to calculate uh, paying off a student loan, and we're going to calculate it by hand. It's important to look at this process. We'll look at faster ways of doing it using spreadsheets and uh, online calculators, but let's do it by hand at least this one time so you get a sense of how the process looks. We start off with a loan of $10,000, and you're given an interest rate of 5%. You're told it's compounding that interest each month, monthly, I should say. And it does not mean, in this case, for example, does not mean you pay 5% each month. It means you take the 5%, which is 0 0.05, and divide it among the 12 months of the year, and that's what you pay each month. So it's the 5%, the interest rate they're giving you, divided by months, and it could be days or weeks. You just divide by the number of weeks, 52, or days, about 365, to get the amount of interest you have per day or week, or in this case, month. And we're going to pay this specific amount each month to pay off the loan quickly, because I don't want you doing too many calculations by hand. This is the table we're going to set up. So pause the video, set it up, and then press play and we'll fill it out together. Okay, so you've got your table set up. Let's figure this out. We've got $10,000 balance. Our monthly interest, that we said earlier that it's 0.05 divided by 12, but that's our rate, right? 5% divided by 12. We want to multiply that by our remaining principal, and that'll give us the interest that we owe. The loan payment is set at 3361.15. Uh, that's an arbitrary number that I chose, 3361.15. So actually, we can just fill that out right here, 3361.15. And the remaining balance is found by doing the following. You take your principal that's left, you add the interest to it, and subtract whatever payment you make, and that's what remains. So you add the interest before you apply the payment, and what's left is the balance. So let's find the interest. And we're going to try and do no rounding here, right? keep this as precise as possible. So it's 10,000 times, that's the remaining principal, times 0 0.01 over 12. 0 0.05 divided by 12. Now you can do 0 0.05 divided by 12 first and then multiply by the remaining um, principal, that's fine. It'll give you the same thing. We have 41.6666. So we're going to do 41.6 repeating, right? That's the amount of interest. So about $41.67. Now you now owe that on top of your principal, principal plus interest. Then you subtract your loan payment. That's going to give you your remaining balance. So we're going to do 10,000. Now on every calculator, there's a way to recall a previous answer. Most calculators that you'll use, I should say. I'm going to press second, and then the negative symbol is for answer. So it pulls up the previous number exactly. And I'm going to subtract 3361.15. And what's left is this number, 6680.516667. And that's really 0.6 repeating. So it's uh, 6680, 6680.516 repeating. So we have the 6 repeating in there. Let me sure I got it right. 6680.516 repeating. Now that's our remaining balance. And it's going to go over here too. So that's what's left, 6680.516 repeating. And one big thing to realize is that if you take $10,000 and you subtract 3361.15, you don't get this number here because the amount you pay only is applied after the interest has been added, right? So the amount you're paying, you're paying off some interest as well as the principal balance. Right, so if you pay them $500, for example, here, it's not going to go down by $500. You have to pay off the $41 of interest first. And then we repeat the process. And notice we're not rounding at all. So we have this number, and then we multiply that, that remaining principal, by 0 0.05 divided by 12. And now, now we're getting a really unfriendly decimal. right? So I'm going to show you a trick here in a second. I'm going to take a screenshot, though. And I'm going to move that number in so we have it. So it's about $27.84. So the, the interest is going down. All right, you can see that. I'm going to just write it out by hand. So, you, so the interest was $41. Now it's about $27.83.84. Uh, 548611. 
Now in a calculator, you can store these numbers instead of having to write them over and over again if you need to. So what you can do is if you press the stow button, you can then hit alpha and then whatever letter you want, let's say A, and say, press enter. Now the letter A is saved as that number, so you can use it as you see fit. But um, that just means in this case, you have the 6680.516666 repeating, plus I can type in alpha A, or I can just grab the previous number, right? Now it's going to get messed up though because I have the A and the number in there, so let's do this better. This plus the interest, and then minus again 3361.15. And we get this number. So I'm going to grab a screenshot of that. 3347 about. Okay. So let's just record what just happened. We had 6680 in balance. We added about $27 of interest. We paid off 3361.15. And what's left is about 3347.202153. And then we repeat the process. We have 3347.202153, and we have some interest on that. Knock it around anything. The calculator has the number saved. Multiplied by 0.05 divided by 12. And then we have this number for interest. And I'm going to take a screenshot because it's a lot to remember. Okay. There it is. All right. So that's. $13 of interest now. 13.946675644 dollars of interest. Ooh, okay, delete that. And delete that. Now your loan payment is remaining constant. It's 3361.15. And to find the remaining balance, we add the principal to the interest and subtract the loan payment. Let's see what happens. So we have 33 hang in there, 47 plus the interest minus 3361.15, and we get about zero. Now notice here, that's not exactly zero, but here at the end, you, you owe them about negative 0.1 pennies, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually record that, just so you can see what often is, ends up happening here. And if you record it to the exact value, your balance is a little bit negative. In other words, you pay them a fraction of a penny more than you needed to in this case, right? And that could happen sometimes, right? But there's little rounding errors in there that have discrepancies, but it's never going to be uh, above, it's never going to be uh, equal to a penny or more. It's always going to be less than a penny. It's a really small fractional amount. So often what will happen is in a spreadsheet, all of these numbers will be routed to the nearest uh, hundredth place. All of these numbers here, hundredth, hundredth, hundredth. And then in the end, if you round this to the nearest hundredth, you would see that that is zero dollars that's left. 